You see, even at a young age, I was a little bit into this personal branding thing, although I didn't call it that. But since then, I've learned that it's not only about or so much about managing your image as it is about increasing your influence as a human being and trying to make a difference in the world somehow, some way, in this little way, in a big way, in some way. Said another way, it's really about increasing your sphere of influence. In our lives, there are things we can control. There are things, more things that are out of our control. But there are things that we can influence. There are things that we can do to increase that sphere of influence. And that's really the objective of personal branding. That's what I'm here to talk about today, is increasing your sphere of influence, being more persuasive. and All over? <laughs> What's that? that? He's, in He's in Boston. Oh. All right. Who's, who, all right. The person in charge of that office. Let's, let's, let's do this theoretically. The person in, the, in charge of that office is usually in his or her office most of the time. And all of a sudden, he or she shows up on the second floor or a place within the company where he has never or she has never been seen. Is it he or she that's he? He has never been seen. Okay. So all the employees kind of look around and, and he leaves. What are the employees thinking? Why was he here? But they go beyond that too, don't they? He was here because I might be getting fired. Or they're going to be making some changes. Or they're going to be remodeling the office. Or they're going to be, and, and the stories continue to flourish. We have a need to complete the story. We don't always, we aren't always able to with the information that we have. It's called jumping to conclusions, but we tend to do that. That's how we think. Um, I was on an airplane yesterday, I mean all day yesterday, coming here from Chicago, and I swear, we, we hit turbulence really bad, and the captain or co-captain of the plane came out of the cockpit, and he walked over to the exit row, and he looked at the wing, and then he went, went back, back into the cockpit. <laughs> OK? So I was feeling real confident. And, all, and the buzz in this place was like, what the hell is going on? So yeah, lesson learned. Fact is, we have a lot of definitions for story. Or we think of it as different things. It's one of these sloppy words that we use all the time. Um, and it's being used more like this in our business every day. There are tales and novels and plays and motion pictures, comic serials, radio plays, television shows, video games, interactive photography, music, and the list goes on and on and on. And they're all stories. But you go to the dictionary or you go to Wikipedia, and what it says is a story is a recounting of a sequence of events. And for anyone under the age of 30, there's this thing called a dictionary that we used to use. And I went to that, and it said, a narration of an incident or a series of events, basically saying the same thing. OK, now, if that's true, this would be a story. Today, I got out of bed, brushed my teeth, fed the cat, ate breakfast, and then drove to my office. That's not all I did, but, but that fits the definition of a story, doesn't it? What is a story? Well, I'm going to give you a. The first hint, it's, a, it's an easy one, the story has to have a character. And the character's motivated to do something. All right? So, here's a story. The morning John, this morning John swam 50 laps of the pool, then he rested up for three minutes, and he swam 50 more. He did the same thing in the afternoon. Don't wait for the movie. <laughs> What's missing here? Anybody? Background? What about the background? What do you need to know? What's that? Tension or conflict. Oh, okay. We're going to get to that, but there's something before that. Why? Why is he doing this? Purpose. To accomplish some goal. Okay, so there's two factors in every story. You need to have a character motivated to do something to accomplish some goal. All right? So let's throw in a goal. He swam 50 laps, he rested for three minutes, swam 50 more, did the same thing in the afternoon. John is training for the Olympics. Now what's missing? 
from this. You said it before. Struggle, conflict. We've got every story has to have one. There has to be something that is overcome. Look what happens when you put in a conflict. This morning, John swam 50 laps, rested three minutes, swam 54, did the same thing. John is training for the Olympics. John lost his legs while fighting in Afghanistan. Now we got a story. There's a struggle, okay? And we can either sympathetically or empathetically identify with, with John. A record number of PR pros and business communicators packed the Sentinel Hotel to hone their storytelling skills. Keynote speaker Jim Signorelli is an expert on story branding. He's worked with Citibank, Kraft, Burger King, KFC, Toshiba, just to name a few. Whatever the message is, he says, it has to connect. And one of the things that brands have to understand is there's a need for authenticity more today than ever before. I mean, it's, brands are too transparent. It's too easy to find out the truth. So don't try to fool anybody. 